it's nice to have been invited here today to give you an overview of our project. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, the Ooze Washes partnership, we had a very small project over a one year period um, called Migrant Links. And what we wanted to do is look at more than 400 years history of people who've migrated to the Fens, but more importantly, look at who's here now, um, because this is the heritage for the next 100 years. So where did we begin? I manage a, a community centre in Wisbeach. We are an independent charity. Um, just to give you a flavour of why we undertook um, the project. We have over 4,000 migrant workers on our database. They come to us for information, advice and guidance, to take part in activities. Um, we run all sorts of activities from art groups to English lessons to Russian, Spanish lessons. Um, all sorts. We are also very, very fortunate. We have and, just over 140 volunteers who undertake a variety of volunteering opportunities at the centre. So when we looked at this project, um, we thought, OK, well, what can we do to support the overall project? And then what can we do for our project? So we managed to find some volunteers from Poland, some from the local community, some from Lithuania, who wanted to take part in the animation, the animated film, um, which was a separate project. And then we also recruited volunteers into our Migrant Links projects. So what's the Migrant Links project? From our project, we hoped to come up with some toolboxes. Um, I have a very small miniature version to show you um, to share the information and the knowledge that we've collected over the year with schools and community groups locally. Um, it's very works very successfully with the schools. It's very interactive, and I'll give you a short demonstration. I won't be dressing up, but I'll give you a very short demonstration. Um, and the other thing we wanted to do was to record some of the some of the people who have migrated here. What what are their what's been their experiences? Now I want to quickly put my hand up and say we are not the experts. We are not historians. We are not wonderful at producing audio material. We did this as a community exercise. Um, and what we've come up with may not be the best quality CD. Um, there are some out there for anybody that's interested. But it, it is about collecting those experiences. And maybe in 100 years' time, somebody listening to that CD and listening to what it was like when you came here, not just external, external migration, but internal migration. And I'm an internal migrant, not an external migrant, I hasten to add. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was born in London, actually. Um, I just got a strange name. <laughs> OK, so what, what did we do for our project? What we did for our project was, firstly, we recruited volunteers. We ran a series of focus groups because at this point, at the beginning, we had no idea what we were going to have in our box. We had no idea how many different nationalities of people live in the ooze washes. And we probably still don't. We just have a slightly better idea. Um, it was volunteer-led from the very beginning. The volunteers decided what was going in the box, who they were going to interview, um, the whole project, basically. We did give, um, we, we undertook some training. We gave our volunteers some training um, and we identified just through the people who come through the centre. And we have probably between 800 and 1,000 people a week use the centre for different things. And just through our volunteers, our staff, we identified 37 different nationalities that are currently living in the Uswashes area, which is actually quite phenomenal when you think it's quite a rural area and there aren't that many people anyway, but within those people there are 37. And we certainly haven't taken in consideration Peterborough, Cambridge or any of those places. This is just Uswashes and just outside. Um, we wanted to gather information about the culture of those people and share that cultural information. So it wasn't just about sharing the Ooze Washes information, but it, about sharing information that other people have brought to us. So we have a, a rich diversity of different cultures that have mingled, and we wanted everybody to, to share that knowledge. Um, we had to identify what, was we going, what were we going to put in our toolboxes. Um, our focus groups and volunteers had some quite heated um, 
disagreements about what went in, what didn't go in. Did we put mythical creatures in? We have internal migration from Ireland. They wanted to put in leprechauns. So, you know, all in good fun, but it was, it was done in such a way as, it, you know, this needs to be interactive with children. So we, we need to take on board what everybody's suggesting. Um, and of course, the challenge of recording experiences and some one or two of our interviews, um, we had to undertake with a translator because that person was very new and it was about providing Russian translation. So again, it was about involving our volunteers for translation or for whatever we needed to, to undertake. Um, we looked at, and I'm going to just very quickly go over this because you've had, you have a wealth of experts here today and that's not what I claim to be. We looked at over 400 years of documented migration to the Ouse Washes area. We looked at why do people come here. That was, that was the key thing, I think, for a lot of our volunteers. Many of those are migrants themselves. So, you know, did we all come here for the same reason or have we come here for different reasons? So if you look over the 400 years, we've got people who came here and bought specialist knowledge. We've heard about the engineers. We have people who came here who were, you know, suffering religious persecution. So we had the Huguenots. Now, within our volunteer group, we found straight away somebody who's descended from the Huguenots and also the, the press officer at Fenland District Council. Um, he happened to mention the other day, he's also um, a direct descendant. We looked at political um, reasons. The German refugees came in 1709, 1831 was a failed uprising against Russia and we had Polish refugees. Agricultural and seasonal work, we have Romani, um, we have Gypsy and we have Irish traveller communities that have come and flitted in and out as do a lot of the, the, the migrant communities. World War II, we had the uh, uh, prisoner of war camp so we've seen some photos of Ukrainians who are working um, who are working on the floods and actually again one of our volunteers is a direct descendant of a Ukrainian prisoner of war who stayed here and also another of our volunteers was um, a German who was at the Friday Bridge prisoner of war camp and he decided to stay in the area um, travel and new experience is another reason lots of students come here not to stay just to to go through to do a few months work speak you know better english at the end of it and earn a little bit of money then we have economical internal migration it's much cheaper to live here than it is in cambridge or in london um, if you're retiring it's a lovely place to retire lots of beautiful walks work and a better life so the latest trench if you like of migration to the area are people who through the EU have, are looking to have a better life here, are looking for work because there's not very much work in their own countries. So again, big, big um, 37 nationalities that we identified. What do we put in our boxes? What our volunteers decided in the end, and I'll give you a very quick, quick view, um, was that they wanted to incorporate things from each of these 37 different countries and put them in a box. So our actual boxes that we, um, toolboxes are probably stand about this high and they're about this big and they're available for loan to community groups or to schools. Generally we go, I go or one of the volunteers will go to the school and we play with the kids, if you like, for an hour, and they have great fun and, as we do. So if I just give you a very quick demonstration of what's in our boxes. We have clothes, because all of the different cultures, nationalities, one of the people that we interviewed was um, from Punjab. So we have a variety of different clothes. We have some jewellery. We, ha we have some Russian rubles. So, tea. Music musical instruments. These scarves um, come from somewhere called East Timor. I don't know if you're all aware, East Timor was um, East Indies, Dutch East Indies. So we actually have quite a large community um, of people from East Timor who come here 
through um, Portuguese nationality. Uh, more food and where we can't actually identify the actual items, we have pictures of things. So this one is Polish food, Taj Mahal. One of the questions is famous foods from the, from the Uzwashes area. So we have strawberries, we would have apples, and then because we tend to lose our real currencies, we have lots of pictures of currencies as well. <laughs> <laughs> so just in case. So um, some, of the, some of our things are traditional. We have a, a part of a traditional costume here. Um, lots of people were involved in making things or finding things and we had a we had probably the best fun was looking for rice from india every packet of rice was produced somewhere but it wasn't india and it wasn't east timor looking for some fish some sardines from portugal i couldn't find a tin or it took me hours to find tins that actually came from Portugal and what, what it highlighted to us and to the kids that came with us was that the foods that we buy and even our tea which is called Punjana that claims to be from the Punjab is actually not made in the Punjab and where things are made they're packed again in a different place so globalization when you when you're trying to find things that are exact to to countries is actually quite difficult and was a, probably one of our biggest challenges oh i was going to say i've lost it but, uh, okay so that was that's our toolbox and the toolboxes are available for loan so if you know of anybody that would like to take it into a school they're more than welcome to do that how we make it interactive is we have some little cards and we give the children these cards and they say things like uh, food you need to find so we put everything out and we say to them right okay so here's your card so on this card it says food from the ooze washes area a famous Russian building a traditional Latvian festival and within that box will be those items another one could be two things from Italy two things from Germany or two things from Latvia. And it encourages children to start looking and exploring, which was the idea of the project. Okay. Um, Mark, how am I doing for time? You're not holding the five minutes up yet? Am I okay? Okay, thank you. Um, I'm conscious I talk a lot and I'm therefore always run over time. <laughs> I promise not to, because you're all, all waiting for lunch, so I will stick to my time. What we wanted to do, we wanted to capture the experience of people who migrated to the area. Obviously, we can't capture personally the experiences from three or four hundred years ago, but we can do as, as it is today. Um, as I said, we had people who are direct descendants um, from the Huguenot, de sorry, Huguenot descendants. We also have people from some of, I, there's a few up there, Lithuania, Russia, India, East Timor, Poland, um, but what we wanted to know was what, what did they think about the area when they came here? What did they miss? Um, what did they like? What didn't they like? What were their challenges? So again, another, another one of the focus groups looked at, well, what questions do we ask people? How do we engage with people? And it's actually quite, that was, again, a second challenge was finding people who wanted to engage with us, who wanted to share their experiences. Because many people don't want to tell everybody their life story, you know? Um, and some of the, the stories we have that we've collected have actually gone off into different directions to those that we planned, but that, that's just how it worked. Um, so, as you can see, there, there's a big Portugal, we have um, Settled Traveller, we have Italy, Malta, um, Egypt. People came different going back to the farming. Um, a lot of people came over from Malta for the, to make jam, for the, for the um, jam factory, um, because they were specifically brought over. We have another um, extract on the CD of when people were brought over from Italy for the brickworks. That was another um, 
key. And people don't necessarily stay in the place they first come to. So they may come to Peterborough, but then many of the people that came here were from rural communities. So they actually drift back to those rural communities. One of the um, things I'm going to share with you, so when I say thank you um, and my, my, my presentation's finished, I'm going to leave you with a four and a half minute extract from our CD of a young lady called Yugita who came here from Lithuania. And as it happened, she actually came, her first home here was Friday Bridge, which has come up as in it was a prisoner of war camp. It's now um, a... Uh, it was a student camp, and now it's owned by WMS, so it's a labour provider. So from me, Mark, I think I'm on time. Yeah. So thank you for listening, and I'll leave you with Yugita's... It was six years ago. First time when I came, I was come with my husband and we was working in the field. Never we don't working in a factory. We was usually working outside. We was working in peace work. We was living in Friday Bridge Camp International. It's like a camp. We was living a lot of people, about 200 sometimes and more. In one room, we was living four and six person. It was quite difficult to live in a, you don't have like personal life, everybody know about you. Because in Lithuania, no was good job, you know, we're trying to make more money for our son, because we have son. Yeah, we was working first year when we came six months in Friday British International Camp. And after that, we come back in Lithuania. And in April, we come back again. But I came back only alone because my husband died in an accident in Lafayette. So I wanted to make money for my son, where we can start to live again. Later I met my partner, which I have daughter with him, and we live now in Visbich here. My son and daughter lives here with, with us. They go to nursery and to school. My son is nine years old, my daughter is three years old. First, what I bring, it was, I think, most important thing when you're traveling with one was toothbrush, <laughs> that was the towel, <laughs> pillow, um, some food from Lithuania. I was bringing bread from Lithuania because um, I was thinking that here is not Lithuania shops. When the first time I was, was going, I didn't know about that, you know. Bread, um, beef. Something like this, you know, mm. to eat just for start. From Lithuania, I was renting flat. It was two rooms, kitchen, and we was living just separate, you know, from everybody we have <laughs> our life, you know. When we start live here in England, we don't have like this, you know. Everybody was looking you now about everything, talking about everything. Oh. Mm -hmm. I even don't think, you know, I was working till when I have a job, you know, till December, September. It depends on how many work they have in the field. I never done working in factory, you know. I was working four season, just outside, picking strawberries, grading potatoes, different jobs on, in the field. I think that I like the best because he is people usually are smiling, help each other. In Lithuania, we don't have like this. They are very friendly. What I don't like? Oh, I don't know even. I ever think like. Maybe a forest, because you know, our country is a lot of forests, you know, lakes. We can make barbecue. Here, we're not allowed to make barbecue in the forest. First time when I came in the game, 24. How, how long I want to stay here? I don't know, maybe we try to live here forever if nothing don't change. If we have jobs, you know, where to live and children go to school and they're learning something, I think that we will try to live here. Okay, thank you.